Hello everyone, welcome to Good Film Hunting, a podcast about an average couple who are on the hunt for some good movies. In today's world, we are consuming more media than ever, perhaps more passively than ever. But we believe that by documenting and discussing the media we intake, how and what we intake will change for the better. It is important that we don't just become another consumer, but a participant, seeking to engage with the media we consume, so that we can see how our view of the world affects how we perceive it, and how it affects how we perceive the world. In this podcast, we are not only on the hunt for some good movies, but on the hunt for a good discussion. So, lean in, participate, and enjoy. Two little mice fell in a bucket of cream. The first mouse quickly gave up and drowned. But the second mouse, he struggled so hard that he eventually turned that cream into butter and walked out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very nice. That was the, uh, probably the best line in the movie right there. It's very <laughs> memorable. It was very memorable. Memorable. Except... As we've discussed, not fully accurate. Not fully but. Scientifically not accurate. However, you know, you get the idea of the picture they're painting. Well, good evening, everyone. James here, as always, alongside my beautiful wife. Introduce yourself to the public. Savannah. Savannah. Yep. She, she hasn't changed. Her name has not changed since last time. Mm -mm. Still Savannah. Probably won't ever change. Probably not. Um, so, Savannah. Catch me if you can. I can't. I'm I too can't. slow. You're too slow? Yeah. How sad. I was also too slow to respond to what you just said. Let's try that again. <laughs> Take two. Savannah. Catch me if you can. That was equally slow. Uh, You're supposed I don't know to say something. This to is say. A... <laughs> I'm not very witty. I'm not unlike Frank, who's extremely what? witty. Oh. And charming. Is that what you think? Okay. Well, all right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we are talking about the movie Catch Me If You Can, a great title, kind of. Do you feel like this should have been named Catch Me If You Can? Do you feel like that was an accurate title? It made it seem like it was, like, more of a pursuit movie than it was. Because, mm. like, it, there wasn't a whole lot of chasing involved. Yeah, yeah. You it kind was, of expected more montages, maybe. Yeah, like running montages, like Tom Cruise running montages. Mm, okay. But there were none. But there were none of that. There was no Tom Cruise in this movie. Was, but there was a Tom Hanks, and there that's all that matters. That is true. There was a Tom Tanks. So we are, we are good. We are covered there. Um, so before we commence with this episode, I will give a brief breakdown of what the episode looks like. I will, or be, I will warn you. For the audience listening, this will be a very spoiler-filled conversation. So if you haven't seen the movie, go watch it. Or maybe don't. Catch it if you can. Catch it if you can. Yes. Go go do it. Go. Yep. Mm -hmm. I can't think of a comeback for that one. So yeah, do that. <laughs> um, so yeah, well, I will start with some lists. I'll start with some lists. I'll start with some uh, facts for Savannah about the movie. What Some facts she might know. Some facts that she may not know. Um, then we'll just give our general thoughts in the movie, a history with the movie, if we have any. Our favorite moment of the movie, we'll go through our rating system where we have four categories that we'll rate on a scale of one to five individually, and we'll give our overall rating. Um, Tom Hanks will come out and sing a silly little song at the end, but not really. And then we will wrap this up. But before we begin, how do you say Leonardo DiCaprio backwards? I have no idea. No, try. You can do it. Um. <clears throat> okay, I've written it out. Okay. That helps you. Yes, that will help me. Uh. <laughs> or packed. Old Ranol. That's a very beautiful name. Very beautiful. What a coincidence that there is a Leonardo DiCaprio and there is a Leonardo da Vinci. I don't. I wonder if Leonardo DiCaprio is his real name. Oh, that's a good question. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, because, like, I don't know. For some reason, Leonardo doesn't really suit him. Like, it doesn't seem like... Well, I mean, what do you mean it doesn't really suit him? No, like, he doesn't seem like... Like, Leonardo kind of strikes me as more of, like, I don't know, like, this, his specific ethnicity, maybe. I don't know. Mm. Okay. 
Okay. Guess what his net worth is? Well, probably a lot. 235 million. Wow. Phew. That is a high net worth right there. I know. He's worthy to cap. Of existence, because his you know net worth is so high, because that's how we base people's that's worthiness. True. If we were basing that, my I would not deserve to exist. I would not. I would deserve, deserve to, exist. to exist even less than you. <laughs> Leonardo Wilhelm we Wilhelm. Will it? Will Wilhelm. Yeah, Wilhelm. Okay, so that's his actual name. So it is Italian. So he's Italian. He is Italian. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I know. I was like that name sounds kind of Italian, but like. Does he seem Italian? But I guess anyone could be Italian. Anyone could Truly, be Italian. Anyone you can, be, can Italian. be a cook. Mm -hmm. Anyone can be a cook. All right. So let's go over some facts about Catch Me If You Can. Guess what day this was released? April 26th. No, it was not. I don't know. It was released Christmas Day, oh. 2002. That must have been a smallish box office situation that day. Well, no, no, was it 2000? You said 2002. 2002. Um, it was distributed by DreamWorks, which was co-founded by Steven Spielberg, who ended up directing this movie. DreamWorks, I think, almost, I think, at this point, kind of explicitly does animated movies. Wait, so this? You say this was DreamWorks? Yeah. Oh, interesting. During during the beginning of DreamWorks, they did a lot of stuff actually, um, live action, but. I think at this point they've kind of just dwindled down to just animated. Just Shrek movies. Just Shrek movies, Shrek remakes, Shrek reboots, yeah. Kung Fu Panda. Um, it had a budget of, want to guess? No, I don't, I would have, uh, 52 million. Did you look? No. Were you right? Oh, really? Yes, really. Wow. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> That's a first. <laughs> well, we're about the box office. Uh, 149 million. No, I had 352.1 million. Wow. It was the 11th highest grossing film of 2002. Um, has a runtime of 141 minutes, and as we know, it's directed by Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg, as I think I've told you before, is well known for doing very iconic movies like Jurassic Park, E.T., Jaws, okay, so just to name a few. Um, only one of which I've seen. Only one of which you've seen. Mm -hmm. Uh, the screenplay was by Jeff Nathanson, who also wrote Rush Hour, that Rush Hour trilogy. I don't know anything about it other than as Jackie Chan. <laughs> um, the Terminal, which is another Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg movie. And he co-wrote Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull um, alongside George Lucas, which Steven Spielberg also directed. So a lot of still Steven Spielberg collaborations here. Uh, the music was by John Williams. He's well known for doing the Indiana Jones and Star Wars soundtrack. Mm -hmm. uh, it stars Leonardo DiCaprio, Tom Hanks, Christopher Walken, um, Nat Natalie B Bay? Bay? I'm not sure you say it. it's French. Natalie. Not, not Natalie. That probably be, it would, it's probably an alternate selling to Natalie. Oh, okay. Well, it's French. Bay. Well, Bay and of course, it also has Amy Adams. Mm -hmm. Which was interesting. An Which interesting, was interesting surprise. Was an interesting surprise? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this was nominated for two Oscars, Best Supporting Actor for Christopher Walken, and then the Best Original Score. It did not win either. Um, as far as the history of this film goes, so Frank Abagnale wrote a book. I don't remember if the exact name is Catch... I don't think it's Catch Me If You Can, but he wrote an autobiography which he sold the rights to for film in 1980. Wow. Oh. So that was a while ago. Um, the film rights passed from studio to studio before it eventually landed with DreamWorks. Um, Steven Spielberg was going to take the role as the producer, and then um, it kept passing from director to director, but directors had to keep um, dismissing or passing the project along just due to conflicts. Um, David Fincher, who did Social Network, was one of the directors lined up to do it originally. Um, and then Gore Verbinski, who did the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, was another director lined up mm. to do it. And eventually, there, after a few other directors, Steven Spielberg eventually decided he would be interested in doing it himself. So that's how that came about. And then the film 
was shot in a total of 147 locations in only 52 days. Wow. I know. Deca that sounds absolutely exhausting. You know, Leonardo DiCaprio reflected, scenes that we thought would take three days took an afternoon. Nice. There you go. Um, as far as the historical accuracy for this goes, uh, Frank Abagnale commented that Steven Spielberg was the only one that could do justice to the story. Um, whatever that means. <laughs> uh, Frank Abagnale was not a consultant on the film and did not read the script. And Frank Ab Ab Abagnale co confirmed inaccuracies included, I'm going to just read this, I've only seen the movie twice, so when the media asked me what I thought about the movie and what was right and what was wrong, I said, first of all, I have two brothers and a sister. He portrayed me as an only child. In real life, my mother never remarried. There's a scene in the movie where she's remarried and has a little girl. That didn't really happen. In real life, I never saw my father after I ran away. In the movie, that kept... in the movie they keep having him come back to Christopher Walken in the film. That didn't really happen. Second, the Bureau had an information officer on the set for all the shooting of the entire film to make sure that what he said about the FBI was accurate. And then, of course, as he later said, I really got most of my information from these three retired agents. So I thought he did a good job of staying very, very accurate to the movie. However, people are, as they look more into Frank Abagnale's actual life, are doubting a mm. lot of his claims. It turns out that a lot of um, what he claimed is not accurate. Uh, the federal court records associated with his conviction show that he cashed only 10 personal she checks dressed up with Pan American Airlines, um, only, oh, totally less than uh, 1,500. And the oh, movie presents it wow. as millions. That's crazy. I know. So that's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> that is a bit of a stretch. That just sounds like very petty teenager behavior. I know. And um, Frank was, based on records, was actually arrested multiple times during this co or during the course of his um, crime life, which the movie does not at all um, represent, and I don't think Frank necessarily admits. Um, and then what was it? They journalists have. Um, done research and confirmed that Frank did not pass the bar exam. Oh, he didn't? He did not pass the bar exam. He never even took a bar exam. Wow. So that's another stretch, um, even though that's kind of a major point in the movie. Um, and interesting fact, um, Carl Hanre Hanretti. Hanretti? Is that what he calls himself in the movie? Carl Hanretti? Hanretti. Hanretti. That wasn't the actual person's name um, that was a name they gave him just for the film the actual person's name was joseph shea but at the time he did not want his name in the film so mm. that they changed it up so there's some interesting stuff going on there historically and that's kind of cringe that frank the real frank didn't really kind of like kind fabricate of, it a lot yeah i mean that doesn't take away from the enjoyment of the movie but that's very cringe yeah yeah oh, well. especially Considering the fact that he claims to have done this all before he was 19 and like he was in jail and Until he was like 20 before he did some other sketchy stuff <laughs> Okay, um, so Savannah, what did you think about this movie and have you heard of this movie before? Do you have any history with it? Um, <clears throat> I've never heard of this movie before I don't think other than like a couple of weeks ago when we saw it and we were like, we should watch it sometime. Mm -hmm. um, but I really liked it. I thought it was very engaging and yeah. it was very entertaining. And as I've told you, I have a fascination with secret spy movies and mm -hmm. like disguises and deception in that way. I always find that really interesting. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really fun. It was... Not a pleasant surprise, but it was like it was a really good watch. Mm hmm Yeah. Um, I've wanted to see this movie for a little while, um, a few years, um, because I was kind of going through a period where I was trying to watch several Steven Spielberg movies, but I didn't get very far in his list. Um, this was one of them, and just didn't get around to watching it. Um, I think because 
when I was going to watch it, we were either dating or we were close to getting married. Yeah, I was going to say that. It just, it just <laughs> didn't happen. Um, so when I saw that it was on Netflix, you know, I, I was kind of excited to see it. And yeah, I, I enjoyed it a lot. I think it was a lot of fun. It was very witty. It was very clever. The writing was very clever. Was, the actors were really good. The story was engaging. There were a lot of really silly beats, like little silly beats that just kept amusing one the whole mm-hmm. time. Um, you know, whether it was from Frank literally soaking an entire tub of toy planes to get the sticker or him having to impersonate the doctor and just literally mimicking lines mm-hmm. from the TV show and the guy being like, oh, I, sh- I knew I should have said I concur. <laughs> That was really funny. Um, yeah, it was. It was just. It was a lot of fun. It was a fun movie, and I think they it knew was. it was gonna supposed to be fun. Um, the title, I feel like, is a little misleading in terms of the vibes. I thought it was gonna be. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, even like the beginning credits with that like weird little animation. Like, yeah. The beginning, it made it seem like Leonardo is running. Yeah. And Tom Hanks is chasing. Yeah. And that's... Just like kind of like. The scene in Emperor's New Groove where you see, like, where they're running from Yzma and, like, uh, the little, yeah. like, icons are running everywhere. That's kind of what I thought, but... Gotcha. Yeah, Tom Hanks didn't really do that much chasing. Um, some chasing, but not much. So, all right, so... Did you have a favorite moment from the movie that stands out to you? Um, not really a favorite moment. There were, there were um, definitely some good... Um... There were a lot of good moments, I thought. Yeah. I liked pretty much all of the moments where he, like, dressed up as people that he wasn't and, like, mm. snuck around. That was, those were all funny. Yeah. I just, I don't know. It was just really just fun in general. I don't have a specific favorite. I just, I liked a lot of it. Mm. You don't like the prayer he does? That was funny. That wasn't a favorite moment okay. of mine. It was it was amusing, but it was okay. not like my Was that your favorite moment? I don't know if that was my favorite moment. I'm trying to think. If there was a specific moment that comes back to mind. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have like an outstanding moment. There's just so many little things that I really mm-hmm. like. I already listed like two of them. Um, I always really like it when Tom Hanks shouts like because he's frustrated. Mm-hmm. Like the scene where um, Frank gets away from Carl mm-hmm. for the first time and then... Carl realizes he's been duped and he's like mm. staring at the window and shouts, hey! But, you know, in his very ta- Tom Hanks way and he's like very flustered and panicked. I always really enjoy seeing Tom Hanks in that <laughs> position. <laughs> I was just thinking about Tom Hanks and how he plays Woody from Toy Story and how that's like the exact same character that he always plays. Yeah. Like, he always plays Woody characters. Like You think so? Kind of like, not always, but like, kind of just that grumpy vibe. Like, Woody's just always kind of like salty. It's true. Not salty, but like really serious. And mm, like, he used to lighten up a bit. Yeah, and I think it's funny when Tom Hanks plays those characters. Mm. Oh, I know. I think I do know what my favorite moment is. I just remembered it. So there's this scene where they're interviewing um, Frank's mom as they're trying to figure out, you know, who the culprit is, who's been, you know, going around cashing all these fake checks. And Frank, not Frank, Carl's having to work with these two guys. He's kind of views as lesser or kind Mm -hmm. of just dumb. And there's the scene where she, the the mom offers them some dessert. I forget what she called it. Sarah Lee. Sarah Lee. But the Carl and the mom are going back and forth and talking the other guy you know, has the, the Sara Lee in his hands and he's like trying to get to fork, but he keeps getting worried that he's going to like interrupt the conversation. Eventually Carl just grabs the fork for him without looking at the other guy and like takes the fork and doesn't just hand it to him. He, like aggressively grabs it and like shoves it into his hand, but like the actual, oh. the prongs of it. It's just, I thought it was really funny. It was very, I like that dynamic. And Carl was definitely a salty person in this movie. <laughs> just a little bit. Um, all right. So we're going to move into our rating system where we will rate the movie through four categories. Entertainment, production quality, writing, and content. We'll rate it on a scale of one to five individually, and then we'll kind of see whether that conclu- whether that adds up to 
um, a rating that we would agree with at the end. So, Savannah, for entertainment for you, what would you give this on the scale of 1 to 5? Did you tell the people that this is going to be a spoiler-filled zone? Oh, sorry, spoiler-filled zone. I kind of already alluded to that at the That's beginning, true. but I'm, yeah, specified now. This okay. is very spoiler-filled. Very spoiler-filled. Okay, entertainment. Um, I'd give it a 5. That wasn't hard to think about. Yeah. Yeah, it was just, it was very fun all the way through. Yeah. I would say maybe the beginning was a little slow. Mm. Maybe. Yeah. But it doesn't bother me. Okay. Once it got going, it was really fun all the way through. It was just really entertaining. Um, I don't really have much more to say about that other than that it was really just, it was just a really engaging movie. Really engaging movie. When you yeah. say, what what about it was really engaging? Well, it was just really engaging. As in like, again, it was something I was, I found interesting. Mm-hmm the concept and Frank was always doing more things to like be bad and he mm. was really smart mm. which is why it makes sense that this isn't really accurate to real life because I don't think any human can really pull that off mm. yeah by themselves especially not like a 18 year old boy. yeah yeah um but it was just really like it was you it grabbed your attention mm-hmm. and it was like Wow, and when you pay attention, you're like, wow, he is doing these things, he's and he's succeeding. Things. It's true. And it's it was true. funny. Mm-hmm. I also think it was funny how he was supposed to be super young in the movie, but he didn't really come off as super young. Yeah. But he kind of did at the same time. And yeah. But, like, so, like, everyone was believing that he was, like, all of these things. Yeah. But he's, like, he literally kind of still looks very youthful. Mm-hmm. He had such confidence about him. I know. So there you go. Well, okay, so maybe as far as favorite line parts of the movie, I do like the part in the beginning where he impersonates the um, substitute teacher. Oh, okay. And starts yelling at the students. That was funny. And the, the one guy who bullied him is like, oh, no. Yeah, that was funny. But yeah, it was fun. It was good. Five. Five. Hmm. I bounced back and, back and forth between a four and a five just because the beginning was a bit slow and I felt like the ending dragged quite a bit. Um, and to be honest, that kind of is Steven Spielberg's weakness I've noticed is mm. his endings do kind of drag a bit. Um, they definitely reached a point like, where's like the climax of this going? Or not the climax, like you knew where it was going, but like, it just felt like it kind of dragged out longer than it needed mm-hmm. to at the very end. Yeah, that was kind of a problem. I don't think it took away from the enjoyment enough for me to read mm. it lower, but I think, yeah. yeah, that was a little... It definitely reached a point where I'm like, okay, let's pick this up. Let's pick this up. Um, so I might I might give this a four just because of that. I still really enjoyed it, and I'd, like, eagerly watch it again. Um, there's just, I think, the sin of a kind of a not super interesting beginning and a drawn-out ending just kind of... It's not a great way to start and stop a movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everything else in between was excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like we were saying, there's just lots of quippy moments, lots of funny ideas going on. It's just very, very fun to like imagine yourself being the character of Frank going around doing anything, impersonating other mm-hmm. people, cashing fake money. Um, even though we would actually never do no, that because it's no, very bad. Obviously. Not to mention illegal. This is true. That is that is true. Um, what was I going to say? I also felt like it got a little less interesting when he decided he was going to settle down with... What was the Amy Adams character's name? Brenda? Brenda. I thought it got a little less interesting once that started. Because yeah. before it was kind of like... It felt kind of spy-ish because he was going from place to place mm-hmm. and personating thing to thing. And then, you know, he decided he was going to settle down with a family and we have however long that is. Mm-hmm. And naturally, like, that kind of leads to a point where he's devastated that it doesn't work out because yeah. his life just can't afford it. But like, that stretch just wasn't super interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so that'd probably be another reason to give it a four. Yeah, definitely the the airport stuff and... The, the doctor stuff was the most interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'd give it a four. I would I'd happily watch it again. I might be able... I feel like I'd probably be able to enjoy it a bit more the second time around, just knowing what I'm getting into. Mm-hmm. It's a production quality. This is where we talk about 
the overall cinematography, directing, editing, acting, casting, music. What would you give it for production quality, Savannah? The acting was really good. I mean, I've never, I don't feel like I've ever seen, granted I haven't seen a ton of movies, but I don't think I've ever seen a movie where like I didn't like Leonardo DiCaprio's acting. Titanic? Or did you like him there? No, I liked him in Titanic. Okay. Um, or Tom Hanks' acting. I can think of something I didn't like Tom Hanks' acting in. I didn't like him in Elvis very much. Which one? Tom Hanks. In this movie? In Elvis. In Elvis. Yeah. Oh, I liked him there, as you know. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I thought the acting was really good. Mm-hmm. The only character I didn't like, actually the only characters I didn't like, were his parents. Yeah. I thought they were really lame. I thought the dad was really weird and lame. Yeah, it was kind of hard to understand. It was hard to understand what his motivations were for anything. Yeah, I think the whole that whole dad plot side plot with the IRS thing was very unclear, which we can talk about more with writing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I thought well, I can't I can't recall a speck of what the music was like, but I'm sure it was good. Um, I thought the this was 2002, so granted things aren't going to be as cinematic as they would be mm. nowadays. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was good looking. And it, yeah. was, it was fun to watch, and yeah. the makeup was done well and everything. Yeah. Yeah, i give it a, I'd give it a 4.5. 4.5, pulling out the decimals. Yes. Oh, boy. I can't do anything without those. Without those, it's without true. decimals. 4.23719. That's going to be hard to calculate. Um, quality, let's see. Um... Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I thought I would agree. I think the acting was good. I think the casting all around was very good. Um, the music, there were, I just wasn't like a big fan of it. I'm not a big fan of John Williams' music, which might be a hot take, because <laughs> a lot of people really like him. Um, yeah, the, it wasn't particularly, I feel like, super nice looking as far as it's in him cinematography goes however i feel like or i don't feel steven spielberg is very well known for having very intentional shots um in terms of being able to evoke emotion which i felt like i really noticed in this one um like there's two moments that stand out to me was the long shot where frank walks in and finds his mom and the other guy and, you know, realizes what's happening, that she was cheating mm -hmm. on his dad. And it's just this very long shot of him literally just sitting on a couch, and you can tell, like, these things are going through his head, and his mm -hmm. mom's in the background just, like, chittering to him, like, yeah. you know, nothing's happened, I'll give you money, yada, yada, yada. I know, that was weird that she, like, bribed him into not saying anything. Yeah, but it's a very long shot that just sits there intentionally, mm -hmm. and I felt like that was very well done. And there's this other one where, like, Frank... Not Frank. Carl's making fun of Frank for calling him, saying, you're calling me because, you know, you have no one else to call. Mm -hmm. But, like, it gets closer and closer to him, and eventually, like, there's literally a shot on his mouth, and it's very off-putting. Um, on Tom Hanks? Is yeah. That? I don't know if you recall I that shot. That. But it was literally, like, right there against his mouth. But it's very off-putting, but it made me feel what I was supposed to feel in that moment. So I'd probably give this one a five, barely. Mm. Um... Just because, yeah, everything about it was very, very well done. It's just, I think, in terms of personal preference, like, as a human being, <laughs> just certain things weren't to my liking. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I can't think of a moment that I was like, oh, that was poorly done or that was bad. Writing, what would you give it for writing? This includes the characters, the arcs, the overall plot. Well... As we discussed, the beginning was pretty slow. Mm -hmm. um, we find out, we kind of get to know Frank and his family, how his parents love each other, supposedly. Mm -hmm. And the dad harps a lot on, like, how he met mm. mom yeah. and stuff. Um, I will say, so the family's in some sort of financial problem or mm. trouble. Yeah. And it's really hard to tell what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. The dad just kind of like mumbles, like old man mumbles about like mm -hmm. the IRS and like how they're trying to get him and stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's really unclear what's going on. And I guess 
Some of Frank's motivation for his bad behavior is that he wants to help his dad. Mm-hmm. But, like, we kind of don't really get that vibe other than the parts of the movie where he randomly shows up and, like, wants to give his dad, like, a Corvette or something. Mm, yeah. You know, like, we don't really hear a lot of internal dialogue or see any sort of dialogue with himself about how he, like, wants to help his family. Mm-hmm. He's very anxious to get his parents back together, but is also very naive. Yeah. And thinks that his parents are just going to, like, randomly get married again and, like, live together. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I think this, the, I think the middle of the movie was, like, the golden age of the movie. Mm-hmm. Like, while he's running around and yeah. being deceptive and cashing checks and stuff. Definitely really well written and really fun. I like a lot of the um, the parts of him just, like, the montages of him just doing things. And, like, yeah. like, you, like you said earlier, I really like the scene where he's soaking the planes <laughs> in the bathtub. To get the stickers off of yeah. them and put on the checks. Which seems weird. Like, again, like, the technology back then, like, for... These people to be able to be so easily tricked mm. was really funny. Yeah. I guess, I mean, the 60s, what was it, 60s, 70s? I think so. Yeah. Different times. Different times, I know. But yeah, I would say the writing was, and I'm not an expert in writing, but I would say the writing was pretty good. Mm. I would say I'd give it a four. Okay. Um, because of the beginning and the end just being really slow mm-hmm. and dragging on and being kind of unclear about what's going yeah. on. What do you think about the Brenda plot point? Um, I thought it was weird that he chose to settle down with her specifically. Mm, yeah. I don't really know. Maybe it's because he was like she was like the one girl he met that was like his actual age. Mm, maybe. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I thought it was interesting, but. Mm. It was kind of weird at the same time. Kind of weird. You just felt like she didn't suit him or? Yeah, I felt like she didn't suit him. Okay. And she just seemed really like silly. She was very she silly. She was a little sillier than she needed to be, I think. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I mean, I, to me, I felt like their dynamic was good. Like it made sense why he liked her. Did it? I mean, I thought so. She was kind of quirky and adorable as Disney would adorable. call it. Adorable? <laughs> Maybe. I guess so. But she was a little, a little too silly for yeah, me. Yeah, a little like, immature. Okay, I really want them to get together and stay together. Kind of. She was just too silly for me. Like, I didn't feel as bad as I would have wanted to feel at the moment yeah. when he realizes, like, she kind of, um, led. kind of led the FBI right to him. Yeah. I yeah, I didn't really like, feel oh, super no. sad about that. Yeah. Like, I felt kind of sad, but not as sad as I wanted to. I was to almost do. like, oh, good, we're moving on to a different point. Yeah. What do you think about the fact we didn't really get closure with the dad? Um, that didn't really bug me too much. Mm-hmm. It was kind of weird. Also, another weird part of it was the fact that the mom, like, literally didn't care at all that her son was going and being, like, sketchy and doing bad legal things. Illegal things. I mean, that's like, just kind of how she was. I know. She, like, literally got remarried and then had another child, which, if you think about it, I don't think that could have been their child to get. I don't know. Because she was like five or six. It's true. Or older. And that would mean that and he was only criming for like two years. Three years, I think. Yeah, she was definitely Because he not. called for three Christmases. Oh, okay. No, I thought it was only two Christmases. No, three Christmases. There okay. was, it was um, the first time he was alone, the second time when he was engaged to Brenda, and the third time... When Tom Hanks finally caught up to him in France. Um, when he's like, why is it we're always talking on Christmas? Oh, uh, okay. So at least three years. Okay. But, and then, well, maybe, I don't know. I don't remember how long he was in that French prison for. So mm. that was, he saw the girl when he came back. So yeah. Maybe. Anyway, that doesn't really matter. Mm. But, yeah, I'd give it a four probably. Okay. Do you, what did you think about the conclusion where they kind of take Leonardo's character in and like Tom Hanks kind of there's like a very my very loose father-son relationship that forms there I liked that did you I mean because then uh what was his name Carl Mm -hmm. he helps Frank kind of turn over a new leaf Mm -hmm. and start working 
for the FBI doing um, stuff that checking for checking for fraud, fraud, fraud and checks. stuff, which is a good job for him. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I would hire a felon, a convicted <laughs> felon who did literal check fraud, but that was yeah. I liked that dynamic. It was good. I, you can tell that Carl felt bad for him. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can tell throughout the whole movie that Frank does have some sort of inner turmoil going on. Yeah. Um, because he, he's just a kid. Like, that's really young. hmm And he was doing a lot of sketchy things. Yeah. Not to mention sleeping with random women. I know, at such a young age. Ew, especially women that were, like, a lot older than him. <laughs> they didn't know. I know. Ew. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> what would you rate it? What would I rate it? Hmm. What would I rate it? I feel like you do bring up some good points about the writing. The there were moments that didn't hit me as hard as I wanted it to, mm-hmm. like the whole Brenda Leonardo relationship not working. Probably not Frank <laughs> relationship not working out. Um, the that just kind of being a less interesting part of the story, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. The very unclear situation that's happening towards the beginning with the father. It's unclear why the parents or why the mom decided to end up, I guess, cheating on the dad. I guess other than that, they were having financial issues. Yeah. Um, like there was nothing else that was really implied mm-hmm. as to why she would have done that. Yeah. Um, I thought there was a lot that was really good about it, though. Like the... or. Well, you bring up the point of it being not super clear that Frank's motivations is to help his father out, like mm-hmm. when he's out doing this stuff, so much as when they just meet up. Mm-hmm. I I didn't mind that too much. I felt like, you know, as a teenager, like you probably it just wasn't always at the top of his mind, maybe. Yeah. So I like I like those scenes when they got together and talked. It was kind of sad how the relationship ended and mm-hmm. there wasn't closure. It was supposed to be tragic in that way. Um, like the scene where Frank, not Frank, Carl, has to let Frank know that his dad is dead because mm. Carl, not Carl, Frank is so insistent that he talk to his father as soon as they're back after he's been apprehended. And, you know, Carl has to be like, yeah, no, he's, he's, he's gone. Mm-hmm. It was a very sad scene. That was a sad scene. Um, yeah, I would. I'd give this one a four as well. I think it's it's very close to being a five. There's just a couple things here and there that could have been tightened up or ironed out. I think to make it a little a little smoother. Um, yeah, I think it's very good. I think there's a lot there to be um, talked about as far as how well it is done. Mm-hmm. The dialogue's very fun. Yeah. A lot of fun dialogue that happens. I will say another... I don't... We don't you know, have to talk about this forever, but... Mm. Another part of the movie that was somewhat unclear was the fact that it was so... Maybe we need to look up on the internet, like, what was going on, but the fact that, like, the dad was part of the Rotary Club, mm. and, like, they had, like, that fancy meeting thing, mm-hmm. and, like, they were there at the Rotary Club, and mm-hmm. I don't really know what was going on with that. Because, like, and then... I guess there were yeah. some problems with the IRS. Like, I didn't really know what was going yeah, on. Yeah, it was just unclear what was going on. I don't know. We can look that up another time. <laughs> All right, content. This is where we weigh the more negative elements or more offensive elements against the rest of the story and the audience that it's being aimed at and just kind of how it affects who we're, you know, who we'd recommend the movie to, um, who we'd be comfortable watching it with, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, so Savannah, what would you give this on a scale of content on a scale of one to five? Hmm. Well, I was thinking about what would be offensive in this movie. There isn't anything too explicit in the sexual content category. Mm-hmm. There's just like several makeout sessions, I guess, and like implied mm-hmm. scandalous co- activity. Yeah. Um, language-wise, it's there's a couple I can think of at least one f bomb. Yeah. That's dropped, but nothing crazy and like mm. offensive. Yeah. I'd probably give it a three. Okay. Like, I I would probably not be uncozy if like our 16 year old brothers watched it. Mm. Probably. Yeah. It's not like the most wholesome movie I've ever seen. No, no. 
I mean, I'm thinking of the social network that was PG-13, which had a lot more edgy stuff in it. And I, what did I give? Did I give that one a three? I don't know if I'd still give it a three thinking about it more. Um, I feel like I would give this one, considering it's PG, I'm also thinking of Elvis too, which I gave a three. I'd probably, yeah, I'd probably give this one a four. Oh, really? Yeah. The, there's a couple, the two biggest moments is the implied makeout session with one of the flight attendants when he's beginning his career. Mm, oh, yeah, and there's, like, the so, sounds of... Yeah, it's not too bad. It's kind of, because of just the, the pacing of it and the beat, it's, it happens very quickly, and but it's there. But yeah, it's I forgot kind of, about that. Yeah. Um, and then there's the Amy Adams and Leonardo moment. Where they're kissing where in the office. Kissing. That's more awkward than anything yeah. else. I didn't think that was But cute. then there's also the scene where she's in her underwear and she's talking oh, about yeah. having had a, um, abortion. an abortion and how her parents don't like her anymore, which that was kind of... Yeah, it was kind of random too, though, because we didn't yeah. even get that impression from her parents. Yeah. When we met them, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, and also that lady that's trying to like pay, her, have him pay her to come mm, stay yeah. with him. Yeah. See, yeah, mm, maybe maybe I would give this one a three then. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. thinking about it a bit more, I'd give it a three. I mean, none of it's too bad. No, maybe I would be a little uncomfortable with our sixteen-year-old brothers watching it, but like. If you closed your eyes or something. Yeah, and like I said, it's usually over pretty quickly. And something about how it's shot and the the tone of it just doesn't make it as yeah bad as like the social network where it's like very sensual. Yeah. Where they're intentionally making it sensual. They're mm-hmm. not necessarily trying to present it sensually mm-hmm. in this movie, which kind of changes how you perceive it to an extent. It's still what it is, but I feel yeah. like I don't have the lingering sense of like, like icky feelings yeah. so much as just like oh that was there that Whatever. was there yeah so yeah I would agree with you yeah okay alright so that gives you a 5 4.5 a 4 and a 3 so we're kind of like 4-ish four yeah I think fives. 4 is a good spring. all of our movies are landing at 4 yeah. these days except Dawn of the Nugget I like to give that a 3 and we rated Klaus 5, didn't we? Did we? I think we did. I think I'm pers- No, did we? Maybe. I don't remember. I'd give that one a 5. Yeah. I've seen Klaus three times last year. Not this year. In the last month of last, last year. Last month of last year. That's pretty impressive for me. <laughs> and I still loved it equally much every single time. In fact, I probably loved it more and more every single time. It's a good movie. <laughs> it's a very good movie. Anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, I, I would give this one a 4. Um... It was very good in a lot of ways. It was very enjoyable, entertaining, thought-provoking, questionable in terms of, you know, historical accuracy, naturally, but who cares about that? It's a movie. I know. Um, would we recommend it to people? I, I would recommend it. I think... I wouldn't be like, call my best friend, or call my friend and be like, guess what movie I just saw? You should go watch it right now, but I'd okay, be like... Okay, so maybe we need to have a new category, like we're... On a scale of one to five, we have to rank how much we would recommend it. Like, Klaus would be a five, right? Mm-hmm. Be like, yeah, you should totally see this movie. Whereas Dawn of the Nugget, that's like a two. Yeah. So. Or a one, even. Like, if you uh, like Chicken Run, like, don't. But I would watch. say two, just because one would be like, do not watch this movie. Okay. Two would be like, mm-hmm. okay. Well, um,. No, I definitely recommend this. Like, if someone was like, do you have any good movies you've watched lately? I'd recommend this one. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't, like, as soon as I watch it, call up all my friends and tell them they have to watch it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I feel the same. I'd probably give it a four if this was a new category. It's like, it's, it's good. It's enjoyable. If you want a good movie recommend, recommendation, watch it. Is it life changing? No. Is it, like, grab you by all the feelings and, you know, take you on a roller coaster? Not really. Is it super funny? Not particularly. I think, it's pr- I think this one's pretty funny. It's funny. It, it it's not like me. a comedy. No, I mean, it is in some ways, I feel. It's very lighthearted. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Um, it borderlines comedy, at least. All right, so Tom Hanks is in this movie. So we get to skip our Tom Hanks. So if Tom Hanks had to interact with himself or not, 
what if there had to be two Tom Hanks in this movie? So in the Polar Express, Tom Hanks does the voice for like five characters in that oh, movie. Oh, really? That's funny. Yeah. So if Tom Hanks had to do that here, who who else would he have to be? Uh, Frank's dad. You think so? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Not like not Leonardo DiCaprio. No. You can't replace him. No. Okay. He's too. Tom Hanks doesn't have the swag. Doesn't he doesn't have, have the, the riz. The riz. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Part of the reason why Frank could get away with what he did is he was always working with women. He literally rizzed everyone just, up the whole time. He's like, oh, is this yours? Finds pretty necklace. Wow. I want to look at the check he just handed me. It's like, oh, no wonder he gets away with all this. It's true. Mm. Did you know that riz is short for charisma? I did not. No. Hm. Yeah. Riz. Well, there you go. I just learned something. I just learned something on the podcast. Riz is not an actual real word. It's like I know that. it's a Gen Z word. But I know. Riz. Riz. Mm. He rizzed them up. He rizzed them. He charismaed them up. That doesn't mm. work. He has the riz. He has, he has the, the ritz, like the crackers. The ritz no, crackers. The ritz he crackers. ritz crackered them up. Well, thank you everyone for stopping by and listening to our um, take on Catch Me If You Can. Uh, We hope you've been inspired to have more conversation around the films you are watching. Let us know what you think about this movie in the comments. And let us know how we did on the rating. But until next time, have a good night. Bye.